All right, so let's talk about node voltage analysis. I've got a circuit. Again, we're looking at circuitry to make an, an educated guess as to what's going on. If I could make one measurement with this entire circuit, if I had one particular point that would make the absolute most sense to know, if I could know the voltage across that resistor, let's call him, I don't know, B. Let's call him B. If I could tell what that voltage is, I could solve everything else because if that's 28 volts and that's some known voltage if I knew that, the difference would have to be right there. And the same way would be over here. If I had 12 and I knew that voltage, then I could know that voltage. I want to talk about a node voltage analysis. If I could figure out what resistor B is right here, I could solve for it. To set up a node voltage, we need a friction point. And a friction point is where current comes in here and here, and it flows through there, and it comes out. So I need two main points. I need a ground point at the bottom, right here, and a node point up top. That's what I need to have happen right there. I need to have that node voltage go into that point right there. So node comes in, and it goes out, and I go through that B. That's exactly what I want to do. Let's write the first part of the node to see if I can't make sense of this. How could I do it? I know that some current from this A resistor, we'll call him A, is coming in, and some current from, yeah, I've already used blue, so let's do it in red. Some current from C resistor is coming in this way. I know that I've got some of the black IA coming in and some of the blue going through the B, and I've got some of the red from that C going down to the blue of the B resistor. So I've got a single point of an analysis to make the node. So what I could say is that the current from resistor A plus the current of resistor C has to come together. Now, before we get any further, we're going to have to say that is going to equal the current of resistor B. Before we go any further, let's see what this means to us, as I need to explain this. I'm going to take a minus right here, because that power source says it's a minus. So that should be more minus. That should be more plus. This side of the B resistor should be more minus. This side should be more plus. I get to the C resistor. I'm going to say that it's more negative this way and more positive this way. I could have, and I'm not going to, so I'm going to erase this. I could say that this is more minus, that's more minus, that's more plus. So we are going to make an assumption of which way current is going. My first assumption is going to be that there's energy from the 28 volt power source, V1, being fed into my 12 volt system. If I look at a solar installation, I know that solar modules on the roof would be 28 volts, and I'm backfeeding to charge a 12-volt battery. So that's what I have there. If I say my node is these two components combined to equal this one, in this case, what I'm saying is I have a plus I resistor A plus, but now that I have this negative right here, I'm saying I'm bringing in a negative current. The current is flowing in the opposite direction that I predict. It will be a minus IRC, and I set that equal to IB. And so if I rewrite this, this is my single node equation right here. That's it. I have one equation to find that middle blue B resistance. So again, because the node is coming into this point, I'm looking at a positive side here because of signage and a negative side here because of signage, which dictates that negative sign right there. So now, how can I find the current that's flowing through that first resistor A? Well, I can find it by saying that voltage of resistor A divided by the 12 ohms that it's rated at will give me current. And then I can say, well, how about resistor C? Well, that would be the voltage of whatever resistor C is divided by the 3 ohms that it's designed for. And then I can say, well, if I want to find and solve for current, I can solve for current by saying that it's the voltage across that blue resistor B divided by 6 ohms. There is the same equation with respect to voltages and resistances to find the current. So we have one equation, three unknowns, VRA, VRC and VRB. To find the current, which is what the node voltage analysis is, we're looking at the IRA, the IRC, and the IRB. The problem is with three equations and three unknowns, I can't solve for this. 
So I am going to do is look at just VRA by itself. Then I'm going to try to get rid of VRC by itself because I want to try to get rid of this RA and this RC in the respect of B, one equation and one unknown. The point of taking our time to understand this math is to give you a better insight as to circuit analysis. We look at a complex circuit. I've got 28 volts on the left hand side, 12 volts on the right. Most of the time the current from the 28 volts is flowing into the 12 volts and I'm going to have to look at it. I'm going to come into a minus VRA because notice the minus sign right there. Then I'm coming into a negative VRB. Again, there's my minus sign there. And then I'm coming into a plus 28 and that's equal to zero. Let's look at VRC. VRC is I'm coming into a plus right there. So VRC is a plus VRC. And then I'm coming into a negative still. So a minus VRB. And that's coming into a plus 12 volts. And that's equal to zero. There's my two small equations. Let's set them equal so I can get rid of the RA and the RC. So what I can do is I can move the negative and the negative over so I get a positive VRA plus VRB equals a positive 28. Remember when I move across the equal sign I get the negative. So I've just switched this around to get me this. VRA is equal to 28 minus VRB. And then if I do the same to the right hand side in the red, I can move the minus 12 over and the VRC over so I could get VRC is equal to a positive VRB minus 12. There are my two substitutions. I'm going to put this into right here and I'm going to put this right to there. Now when I rewrite this equation I get 28 minus VRB divided by 12. Then I subtract VRB minus 12 divided by 3 and I set that equal to this guy VRB divided by 6. There I have one equation with three unknowns. Now you can have a variety of things that happen here. You can solve this from a number of ways. I'll show you how to do that next. So here we go. We've got our th one equation with one unknown, VRB. How do I get rid of that? I personally would do this. I'm going to multiply the whole equation by 12. And I'm going to get rid of that. So what that does is I dump the 12 there. What I'll do is if it's like that, I'm going to show you a kind of a, a method of doing that. 12 will give me 28 minus VRB. In the red, it's subtracted from. Now, in this point, it gives me 4. So that's minus 4 times VRB minus 12 in parentheses. And then that's going to be equal to this guy here. That's 2VRB. There it is. So now, if I rewrite this again, I get 28 minus 1VRB minus 4VRB minus a minus, so that becomes a plus, plus 48, and that equals 2VRB. A minus 1 and a minus 4 becomes a minus 5. Minus 5VRB, five move him across the side of the equation, so that gives me, I'm just going to rewrite this, 7VRB, because I moved the minus 5 over, to equal a positive 48 plus 28 is equal to 16, carry the 1, uh, 676. So VRB is going to be equal to 76 divided by 7, and that will be equal to 10.85. I'm going to round up because it's 10.857, so let's make it 10.86 volts. Now, since I know what that is, if that's 10 0.86 volts. What that means in my circuit here is I can get rid of all of this node analysis stuff and what that tells me is this guy is 10.86 volts. Well if I have 12 volts on the left side that better leave me with 1.14 volts here. 
I take 12 minus 10.86, it gets me that. If I have 28 volts on the left-hand side and I have 10.86 in the middle, that better give me a value of 17.14 volts. So let's go over this one last time to give you an understanding of how node voltage analysis works. Node voltage analysis works by taking your current and looking at a single node point. This is the most important aspect that I have in the circuit between those two points. If I could figure out that this is 10.86 volts, I can simply find that and that. So my objective is if I go and troubleshoot a circuit, they may say, go to test point number three and read this voltage here. And in this case, if I read 10.86, then I know the circuit is performing correctly. In a reality sense, are you going to do a node voltage analysis? Most likely not. It's not a very day-to-day -day relevant topic. However, understanding the characteristics behind the scenes is going to make this far more easier for you. So what we say is we've got that. I've got three separate equations, but I have three unknowns. I can't make that work. So then I do substitutions where I came up with these values here and plugged in to get these three separate equations. So then we stitch that together. I wanted to reduce these because I have 6, 3, and 12. How convenient they're easy numbers. In reality, you're going to deal with 330, 270 ohms, 1.2K ohm. So that's not really in my favor. But for ease of argument's sake, we're going to do this. And then that comes up to one point. So a node volt works very well when we know if I can find one point, everything else will be solved for. That's why we use node voltage analysis.